Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over how to make a top-down shooter game in Scratch. As you can see here, when I start the game, I spawn in with this little character, and then there's these enemies that start chasing me. And if they're off-screen, they get replaced by this arrow effect, so I know where all the enemies are. And of course, I can move around with WASD, and I can hold my mouse down to try to take out these enemies. And as you can see, it's super smooth, and when we finally take out the enemies, it has a cool particle effect, and I get some score. And if one of the enemies finally touches me, it restarts the game, and my score gets reset. And as you can see there's also some basic enemy ai they kind of try to walk around each other as you can see like when this one touches it it starts moving back or they just kind of move in whatever direction gets them out of being stuck which actually makes for a little bit more fun gameplay because they don't just get clumped up all on top of each other and we'll be doing all this in just one episode if you're excited for this tutorial then make sure you hit that like button and because they're subscribing i can't thank you guys enough we hit 10,000 subscribers earlier this week and that's just mind-blowing to me so thanks a lot Anyway, we have a lot to do, so let's just hop right into this tutorial. So I'm in a project with a couple of sprites. I have a sprite called Player, and within it, I have a costume called Body, literally a cube. I went with a pretty simple vector art style for this game, just so that way it's nice and quick and easy for you guys to follow. Then I have two circles that are the eyes. Next, I have Gun, which I have a costume called Pistol. It's just a very simple pistol I whipped up in a few minutes, and it is just perfectly centered. Then I have Pistol 2, which is for facing to the left, and it is just the first pistol but flipped vertically. Then I have a sprite called bullet which is just a bullet, wow, and it just has one costume bullet. Then I have enemies which is just a red square the same size as my player. Then I have a sprite called collision and this will help with the kind of almost simple pathfinding. Now the way to make this is just by copying your main sprite, pasting it in, I'll change the color so you can see it, and all I did was just shrink it in this way. Then I held alt and just shrunk it in that way and that's how I made this shape. Last but not least I have icon which is just the icon that'll pop up when they're off screen. Then lastly for the sprites I have one called particle which is just a 16 by 16 square. If you want these exact sprites and costumes then you can check the link in the description below to use my assets for this game. Okay so let's start by making the main gameplay loop. So in the backdrop do a wind green flag clicked and then a broadcast message restart like so. Then when I receive the restart message all we need to do is do a broadcast in it short for initiation and then player and make sure you make this a broadcast and wait so now when we start the game it should broadcast this in it player so in the player i'll go ahead and just do a show for now then when green five clicked i'll hide now before that let's switch costume to the body and we'll go to front let's also set the rotation style to left right so it doesn't rotate all around and here we go you can see that it's working because the player popped in in front of the gun which is good next let's get the player position working so make a for the sprite only variable called x this is going to be the x position then a for the sprite only variable called y which is you guessed it the y position now all we need to do is go ahead and set both of those variables to zero in the beginning next let's do a when i receive tick player like so which is going to run every frame go to the x and y now in the backdrop right underneath this init player let's forever broadcast the tick player so now we have this in a loop and as you can see it goes to zero zero because the x and y are zero now let's get some basic player movement in so all we need to do is make a for the sprite only variable called x velocity or x vel for short and then another one called y velocity now make sure you go ahead and set both of those to zero in the very beginning so that way we aren't sliding around when we start the game now go ahead and change the x velocity by the key depressed and that's just going to make us move right when we press the D so let's go ahead and do D minus A. You can now see if we show the X velocity in the beginning it's zero but if we press A it goes negative and when we press D it turns positive. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the Y so change the Y velocity by key W minus key S press. Now when we press W the Y velocity goes up and when we press S it goes down. Now let's go ahead and change the X by the X velocity and change the Y by the Y velocity. Make sure your variables are correct here otherwise this won't work. And now if we start the game you can see that we can move around it's just super slippery and we never slow down after we let go of the keys so we'll just infinitely keep sliding okay so to make this have friction let's set the x velocity to itself times a number smaller than one i'll do 0 0.9 and make sure you do the same for the y set y velocity to the y velocity times 0 0.9 okay so if we start the game now we actually slow down whenever we let go of the wasd and it's nice and smooth feeling now to clean this up a bit let's separate this 
this into its own section. Make a custom block called player movement like so and then click OK. Now just put all this code underneath there and run player movement right here. You can now see that it works the same, it's just cleaner over here. Now let's set up the eyes so that way they'll look at the mouse and look all nice and stuff. So at the very end here, let's go ahead and create a clone of myself. So let's make it actually look like an eyeball. So all we need to do is when I started the clone, switch costume to eyes and then go to front. And to make this always be layered correctly, make sure you wait zero seconds before the create clone of myself. Here we go, look at this. The clone has popped up on the eye. Now right now it is actually using the player movement script because clones can receive messages. So we need to make sure that only the body does this stuff. So to do that, it's actually really simple. We just want to check if the costume number equals one. Whatever number of the costume that your player body is, that's what you want to put there. So mine is one as you can see here. So I'm checking to make sure it's one. Now when we start the game, only the player body moves and the clone down here just kind of does nothing. So let's go ahead and make the eyes follow the player and also look at the mouse. So in the backdrops, add another tick here and name this tick move eyes. And the reason we're separating these ticks out is that way it happens instantly and there's not any lag and delay for the eyes moving. So when I receive tick move eyes, we want to check if the costume number is two because that's the number of the eye costume number two. Now all we want to do is point towards mouse pointer and make sure you set the rotation style to don't rotate in the when I start as a clone. Next we need to actually make this move to the player. So go into another sprite like the gun and pull out a go to then a player and now pull that into the player and this will allow us to go to its own sprite which you can't do from this drop down right here. So the eyes will now go to the player. So if we start the game you can see that the eyes once again follow the player except it's using this script which is good. So first of all let's position up a little bit so change y by 5 as you can see that just moves the eyes up a bit and then last but not least we want to move 10 steps and as soon as we do this it actually starts looking at the player now this isn't very smooth looking so let's go ahead and smooth it out an easy way to do this is just adding a distance to mouse pointer now you can see that it glitches out a bit but when we move close to it it moves less and when we move farther away it moves more now to make that happen less let's just divide that by 25 and you can now see that when we're close it doesn't move much but when we're far it kind of looks farther so now we have some nice smooth and good looking eye movement Alrighty, so we have the basic player set up, so let's start working on the gun. Add a wind green fly, click hide. Next, when I receive, we need to make a new initiation message. So I'll do in it and then gun. Now, all we need to do is show and go to front. So now what we want to do is go into the backdrops and add a broadcast here and do broadcast the in it right after the player. Make sure you do the and wait. So now you can see that the gun should always, no matter how many times we start, be in front of the player. Yep. Yep, that is correct and that is due to our ordering of our broadcast here now let's go ahead and make like a green flag type broadcast message that runs after we initiated everything so at a broadcast start game i'll do all caps so it stands out right underneath all the initiation now in the gun go ahead and do when i receive the start game forever now let's make it move to the player so instead of just doing a go to which will make it happen instantly let's make it super smooth so add a times here to smooth it out and then a minus. Now we just put the smoothing here so I'll do 0 0.5. You can do anything from 0 0.0001 to 1. 1 will make it happen instantly and 0 will make it happen not at all because it's so smooth. So now all we need to do is put its desired position which is the x of player minus its current position which is just x position. We're not going to worry about scrolling for the gun since it's just always going to be plastered on the player. So you can now see that when we do this it will smoothly set its position to the x position of the player. Now we don't actually have the y yet so let's make the y work as well. So just duplicate this and then do change y by the y of player minus the y position. Very important that you change this stuff. You can now see that no matter where we go it will always follow the player. Make sure everything is working exactly how mine is up until this point otherwise the rest of the tutorial probably won't work for you. All the positioning is correct and everything seems to be working. Now really quick this is bothering me so let's switch costume to pistol
crystal one in the beginning that way it's right side up okay that looks a bit better and now we need to position the pistol a bit better so let's do the y of player minus 10 so you can see now that it moves down a little bit which in my opinion looks a lot better and let's also make it bob up and down kind of like a breathing animation take this minus here and add blank to it for now now go ahead and pull a times block out in the middle of nowhere here and then another times in there now all we need to do is take the timer times 250 so this is the speed of it then the amount we want it to move is three that way it's just a little bit of movement then we just need to take the sign of all that this little algorithm will just make it bob up and down now we just want to add that to this little script over here make sure it looks exactly like mine really quick i'll break it down it's the y variable of player minus 10 then we simply add on the sign of all this stuff then we put that in the left side of the minus y position and then we take all of that times 0.5 and that will make it smoothly bob up and down and follow the player so you can now see that the pistol bobs up and down and it follows the player now let's go ahead and just do point towards mouse pointer and as you can see now look at this the gun will actually point towards our mouse now there are some issues first of all i want the gun to move a little bit to the left and the gun is upside down now you may think for the position issue all we need to do is do the same thing we did for the y and just move the x position like say minus 10 and you know that works fine for the right side as you can see now it's minus 10 and it looks good but as soon as we turn the gun to the other side well we need to actually move it positive 10 so we need to make it change depending on if it's left or right so to do that all we need to do is add an if statement and check if the direction is greater than zero so if it's greater than zero it means that we're facing to the right so we can switch costume to the pistol and then we want to change x by negative 10 otherwise we just want to switch costume to the pistol 2 and move 10 pixels to the right so you can now see that when we're facing towards the right it teleports kind of to the left of our body and it looks correct and when we switch to the right here we go it's still right side up and it looks at our mouse and it looks super good okay so let's get this game scrolling so all we need to do is go into the player and make two new for all sprite variables one called scroll x like so and the other called scroll y now make sure you set the scroll x and y to zero in the beginning these are going to stand for basically the position of the camera now instead of going to the x and y do x minus scroll x like so and then same for the y so make sure you do y minus scroll y so now if you start the game nothing should look different and that is good but if we show the scroll x variable switch it to a slider and we move it as you can see here it moves the player but not the gun and that's because i put the wrong thing in here what we want is the x position of player and the y position of the player for the gun so now if we start it and we move the scroll x it moves the whole entire player so the first thing that we can do with the scrolling is create the bullets because now we have the camera working so let's make the bullets work so inside the bullet add a win green flag clicked and then a hide now we want to go ahead and add a when i start as a clone go to the gun and then we need to get all this scrolling stuff working so find this go to x minus scroll x and pull that into the bullet now go ahead and do when i receive tick player go to the x and all that stuff so basically we need to figure out the right position so when the bullet spawns it's going to go to the screen position of the gun but we need to convert that into its world position which is the x and y here so to do this all we need to do is set the x to its screen position which is x position plus the scroll x then we just want to do the same for the y so set the y to the y position plus scroll y now after we've done that go ahead and show and just to make sure it doesn't flash or anything weird do a wait zero seconds so you can now see that when we start the game and we create a clone of the bullets look at that it goes perfectly to the position let's also point in direction right here the direction of gun and then also go to front and clear the graphic effect so now let's go ahead and make the gun be able to spawn these bullet clones so inside the gun add a when i receive the start game forever check if the mouse is down which means we're clicking then create a clone of the bullet and wait 0.15 seconds that way we can't shoot instantly again let's also make this have a cool knockback effect so move negative 15 steps you can now see that whenever we click it does a cool knockback effect and a bullet gets created perfectly at our gun's position not only that if we go ahead and show the scroll x and move it you can see that every Everything on the screen scrolls with the camera and if we go over here and click the bullets still spawn in the right position now there is a slight issue as you can see it's not quite perfectly positioned it's a little bit offset
that and it spawns like at the very back of the gun which is not correct we want it to spawn at the front of the gun so to fix the kind of offset problem right after we go to the gun change y by direction now that's going to be too much so just change y by direction times negative 0.05 now let's move it forward now to do that we can't just use the move 10 steps because we are using a scrolling system so we need to kind of use math to move it forward 10 steps according to its direction so make a custom block called move then it inputs steps and then a label steps and click ok now you can see that if we pull this out we have our own like custom move block now we need to make this actually work though because it does nothing right now so we want to change the x by the abs of and change this to cosine of a minus block here and do 90 minus the direction and then take all that times the step and then do the same thing for the y except we want to change this to change y and then this to a sine cosine is for x and sine is for y so if we go ahead and move one steps in the tick loop here if we start this as you can see the bullets will move forward so that means that this algorithm is working alrighty so now that we know this working let's use it to position the bullet towards the front of the gun we want to move 25 steps and as you can see now when we do that the bullet now will spawn at the very front of the gun and let's go ahead and move all that stuff in front of the wait zero seconds now let's just do a forever loop and do a move 15 steps maybe and that'll just make it move forward now we kind of have this issue where it kind of clumps up on the edge of the screen so let's fix that up all we need to do is add an if statement right here and check if we are touching the edge then we'll set the ghost effect to 100 percent wait zero seconds and delete this clip if you're confused about what this script does here then make sure you go check out my how to make bullet collision in scratch video because i explain what this does so you can now see that whenever we shoot once it reaches the edge it'll actually delete itself and that marks the conclusion of the first part of two on making a top-down shooter game in scratch make sure you stay tuned for next week because we'll be finishing this game up by adding ai so thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing but anyway this has been owen and i'm out